hi friends i hope you're doing well behind me is a butterfly it just flew away it's one of those yellow cream butterfly anyway so in today's video i'm sharing with you what is going on in the backyard friends i can't believe everything is in bloom and the garden is looking so lush and yes i know we in summer and it's blazing hot so the key for me i just keep watering my plants i probably water my plants every other day and i do it at the end of the day around this time and i water at the base of the plant not the overhead of the plant but the base of the plant and if there's any spent blooms i just trim them off that's how i keep my plants looking lush in the middle of summer i should say but anyways in today's video let me share with you what's blooming and how things are looking behind here friends look at these echinacea oh my goodness i absolutely love echinacea these are the orange ones as you can see looking good and then you have the salvia i planted blooming there and friends my pots are looking good still look at this the gara in the center and i have some petunia in there with some verbena looking pretty good still and then here friends these are my salvias i did from seeds these seeds i purchased from baker creek so these are my salvias looking so good and then you can see the bleeding heart it is dying back that's why the color looks like this and look what's blooming yes the balloon flowers are blooming you know how much i love these guys yes i'm telling you this year they just got taller last year they were much shorter this year i noticed they grew taller and slimmer if that makes sense and this other pot is doing well just a mixture of snapdragons with verbena dusty miller these were just extra leftovers i had so i just planted them in here and the nandinas are doing well still looking pretty good these ones i think they're called the glow nandina they're supposed to be that green color as you can see and most salvias below there friends and look at these echinacea yes friends i think this happened from the seed just planted a plant there i do not remember planting this i know i only had two orange one there and one here so i think this just happened from the seeds or the birds and all of that in the fall and i noticed behind here friends look at this another echinacea right here and of course this one i did not plant so i think that's just from leaving the blooms up as i said to you before in the fall leave your echinacea as it let it dry back because right here is the corn sorry b the, oh the pollinators love echinacea they're everywhere here right there is the corn and what happens is that after it dries out that is food for the birds in the winter and there's also some bees not sure what type but some bees i think someone left this comment on my channel so if you're watching thank you for educating me the person said the bees somehow live like this turns dry right and the bees live somewhere in there so when spring comes the person i think they were trying to say when spring comes don't cut it back and discard off it leave it let let whatever happens because you know in spring the first thing we do is cut back our dead plants and clean up the garden and so the person was just saying not to do that immediately because the bees live in there over the winter anyway so once again leave your echinacea alone great it's source for winter food for the pollinators yes i would be inside and i would see it looks like they're yellow and black goldfinch that's what they're called they will be out here eating on the dry cone heads but anyway friends look how lush this look sorry i digress there but just giving you some information and all of this friends as i said to you before i do not remember planting pink echinacea behind here i don't know where they came from i only know i had the orange and that was it not just that but look friends they spread do you see that and i remember last day i saw little offset shoots looking like this let me show you like right here like that last day i saw a ton of them here and i just left them alone i didn't touch them so i think this is what happened they just grew and they got bigger but i'm loving it if the pollinators the wind however this happened i just love it i love when there's a lot of surprises in your garden right anyway so the other plant is doing well my first time with gara this year and i decided to put it in a pot to act as a tr thriller i think that's what it is a thriller the centerpiece and it's doing really good and i'm hoping it would survive the winter in the pot 
but if not maybe in fall i'll find a spot in the garden probably put it in the hummingbird garden probably put it in the flamingo garden bed in the fall if not i'll just test it leave it in a pot and see what happens but the petunias are still looking good look at them friends these ones were special ones these were dream, sweet dreams petunias these were bigger ones i got from a private garden center these one from your local big box store because i noticed with those from the big box store by this time in the summer they look half dead and leggy so next time i'm definitely going back to the private garden center and pick up more of these because i'm telling you i'm loving them and you could see how well they are performing all right friends so that's how the front hair looks so pretty and then over here the planters are still doing well these are dahlias i potted up and more petunias in here look at that dahlia peep in there <laughs> happy color and then in the back the rose of sharon they're doing well no blooms on them but i do have some buds there friends look at this rose mallow hardy hibiscus you guys know how much i love my hibiscus this one is a pink look how big it got i don't know with these plants they're just doing a lot better this year it's really huge i did not expect it to get this tall it's big and it's bushy and it's loving that spot and i think it adds some vertical interest to the back of the house anyways and in front of us friends this is a blushing bride hydrangea look at it all white oh i love it so much and i remember buying this from lowe's maybe three years ago and it was ten dollars and clearance i got it for half off it was so tiny yes and just look at it i prune it in spring and it's doing well i just love how we're just filling and blending with everything there and then the hookahs are doing amazing here friends just look at the blooms here in the fall season i come in and i cut these and i use them as fillers for my floral arrangement because they have that kind of fall color going on there and you could see the lilies are already bloomed so i just make sure i cut off the head and i just saw i missed one here so if you have lilies in the garden just make sure you cut off the tip otherwise right here would give you seed heads and you don't want that with your lilies so i have to come in and cut it off but i capture more of, most of them and yes friends my bird bath is clean i cleaned it last night because it was disgusting okay every two days i clean it and the birds were just making a mess in it but I've said this a million times, right? I just love my pollinators. And then behind here, we have hydrangea going on there, blooming behind there. Oh, and friends, let me show this to you. This is a blazing star oleatris, okay, feather. I think it goes by those three names. This one is the white, yes. Look at that, I love it. Normally, you have the pack with all different colors, but when I planted the last year, I planted the pack with all different colors and strangely this one was just the white so I just love how it balances out the different colors behind here and it complements the white blushing bride hydrangea all right friends let's go over here and this corabelle I'm telling you is just loving where the spot definitely in fall I'm gonna come in and dig it out just part of it behind here and share it with my girlfriend and give her some of it so I did that last year on this side but I didn't get to do this side so you can see there's a difference in how they look so I'm definitely gonna give it some room and just take out some and just share, share it with my friend and friends more balloon flowers tucked in here and then we have more Luxpaw in there those I did from seeds using the winter sewing method and there's a Leatris right there do you see that yes and the hydrangea in the back there beautiful colors together I just tucked some in between they add vertical interest and they give your garden a very whimsical look so if you never try Leatris, I recommend next time add it to your shopping list, okay? Very good plant for the pollinator, drought tolerant, it loves the sun, and it's also good as a cut flower, yes, and it's different. And over here we have daisy, but they're not blooming as yet, you can see. Oh, and friends, let me share something with you. I'm not sure if you remember, I had salvias right here. I still have one here. So I just trim it down just that way it could give me new blooms later in summer. It should be blooming again, but I trim it out. And then over here, I had another one. And friends, this is where I put the 
coreopsis flower this one i told you guys about i think i shared this with you before i think this one is the red sweet vanilla i'll put a name on the screen for you i was trying to figure out where to put it so guess what i did i moved my salvia from here and i put my salvia in my rose garden bed with my roses and then i'm gonna come in and dig this out too and transplant this in my rose garden bed and then i'm gonna go back to the private garden center and see if i could find one more of this coreopsis i just love it when i love something i just love it okay so then i could just put one here and balance it out but i'm not gonna move that until i get the other one hopefully they have more when i went there i think they only had five so we'll see so that's what's going on behind here and friends my potato is doing so well yes these are potatoes i planted in the frosting bucket <laughs> look at that they're doing well i'm so excited about this and then here's more elephant air over here so this is what the back is looking like and then i'm gonna go over and show you what's going on in the planters on that end but i just wanted to show you this side and let's go over to the other side All right, friends, so here is this side. Still has some garden work going on. So here I have my carrots. Yes, looking good. <laughs> I'm so excited about these, friends. Do you see this? Look at that. So that's my carrots there and the salvias I planted from seeds. And then we have more elephant air going on here. All right, friends, look at this. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy looking at these. These are those pineapple lilies I planted with you, I think, maybe in spring. Look at this, friends, do you see that? So I put them in a pot here. This is why I keep telling you guys to do some plants in pots. So that way when you have plants that are already dying back, for example, I have a bleeding heart to the right of me over there and you could see it's it's dying back because it blooms in spring, right? So I have a video I'm working on, so it's always good to have some plants in pot so you could fill in those empty spaces so that way your garden would always look fresh and like something is always blooming, if that makes sense, especially around the summertime when everything is looking so distressed. It's always good to have some backup plants in pots. But friends, I am so in love with these and let me show you more of them. They're not fully mature as yet, but you could see they're coming out. Look at this friends, oh my goodness. Just look at that, yes. So this will get bigger and this should turn yellow like a pineapple. So these are pineapple lilies and friends i was babying these okay i had them covered from the squirrels because you know how they get with when you have stuff in pot they get nosy especially bulbs oh my goodness so i think they're good yeah so here they are i'm not sure if you remember when i did a video with you my tropical plant video and friends look at this this is the canna lily look at that i'm getting a bloom in here i am so excited and then I sprinkle some alyssum seeds in here and you could see they're coming up there. Very happy about this. So when they're blooming, the pineapple lily and the canna, I'll give you, I'll make another video with just the tropical plants, but I just wanted to give you an update with those. And here we have caladium. I'm not sure if you remember when I did these with you. And I just have this covered from the squirrels. I feel like it, they're taking forever, but the caladium, they start to bloom when it gets really, really hot. And I remember I planted these very early, so doing pretty well. And look what's here, a weed. I just left it there. <laughs> I have to pull it out. And then while I'm here, I'm just going to show you the rose garden. It's doing well. Right here, you can see the roses are blooming. I think this one is a happy birthday. And most I put some salvia seeds in there and the salvia over here is doing well look at the bee <laughs> do you see that <laughs> yeah so I just put some salvia here and then this other rose I think this one is Sierra lady looking so pretty 
so the roses are sending out a new set of fresh blooms they bloom a lot in the spring so now is the time they'll be blooming again so pretty And friends, this is a lavender from the dollar store seed. Yes, I planted that from the dollar store seed. You should, mm, you should smell it. it. Smells so good. Yes, doing well. I use the winter sowing method for this. So definitely, come next winter, I'll definitely be doing that. It really worked because I, I know love. I did some research and I was told a lavender could be really finicky and hard to start from seed. So give it a try and use the winter sowing method and it's the dollar store seeds they're really good seeds and over here friends look at my squash i have squash <laughs> look at my plant here yes these are from the dollar store so i just have them in this container as i always plant them in and i just put a trellis here to give them some support very excited about that and here's another salvia i did from Baker Creek, this one is a perennial. The red ones are not perennials, but this purple one I remember is a perennial. I'm very excited about that. And the South Africa rose, you could see I'm getting new buds in here again. All right, friends, what else is blooming behind here? And these two sides here, they're just newly constructed rose gardens. So you can still see the plants have not matured as yet. And then we have lavender here. These I got from Lowe's in the spring, still blooming. And friends, this is a Kalimanjara. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but I'll put a name on the screen for you. I purchased these with you in January, I think. These are from Baker Creek. I did the seeds with you and look how it looks. This was one tiny plant and it's getting so big. Yes, just look at it. So I just tuck some marigold in there just for insect control with the rose bushes because you know marigold is a good companion for your veggies and I think it is good companion also for your roses that's why I just put marigold in there because it gives off the smell and then these are some echinacea I did using the winter sewing method I have no clue what color they are but friends I had left over and I just tucked them in here and then these are the new roses I planted early in the year very small still oh and this is a salvia i told you about i moved from the fountain and i brought it over here and friends look at this now sure if you saw maybe a couple of weeks ago i planted some clarence lily bulbs from walmart garden center yep getting big but do you see this that's a squirrel like something decided to bite off the head so i think i'm gonna come in with my dollar store mesh garbage basket and just cover it just to protect them but i'm just giving you updates so you can see it's getting big already and here's another one of the marigold i'm just in shock how big they are they were so tiny and then you could see the ranaculus they're dying back these are just some heads on there and that's more echinacea i did using the winter sewing method i did not need any more echinacea but i just tried it i had leftovers and i'm like you know what i just put them in here so i'm curious to see what colors they will be and then these are peonies that we pre-sprouted together one two three i think they were the coral flame and hawaiian they were like the pink ones so i'm thinking next year we should get some blooms in them but these are the new garden beds, the rose garden bed, I should say. And I could just sit here on the chair and just take in the view. That's the point of this, right? <laughs> I could just sit here and just enjoy it all. And there's roses behind me blooming still, but I just don't want to make this video too long. And let me take you down to the flamingo garden bed so you can actually see. Oh, friends, and here's these. I got to show you these. These are my hardy hibiscus. I have three in the back here. So I just spread them out behind here so that way they don't compete with the plants in the garden itself because they get massive. They get four to five feet tall and wide. This one was in the front, friends. Oh my goodness, I dug it up in spring. And after I dug it up, I said to myself, what did I do? Do you know like on Microsoft Word, you could have an undo button when you type something, you could just click the undo button. I wish I had that because the reason why I'm saying that, friends, the roots were long. I've never seen roots like that. You think they were like a pine tree roots. They were 
huge okay and i thought to myself oh i killed the plant but i still had a whole dog here and the roots were so long the friends my hole was that small and the roots were enormous and i thought to myself it's not gonna survive so i kind of squeezed the roots in the hole not not the way you should plant transplant a plant but that's what i did i squeezed the roots in the hole and i tried to trim some of them and i thought to myself i just ruined my hardy hibiscus and guess what look at it you see so just sharing that story with you i was so happy at first i'm like i should not at first i said to myself i should not have done that and then i just planted it and look so my point is these plants are very very resilient very resilient and i think this one is a holy grail and this one i planted with you this one is another proven winners one. Oh, i forget the name but I'm not sure if you saw the video it should be pink and white and friends this one is a clarence one i got last year from monrovia look at it oh it was half dead looking you should have seen it and it is doing very well it's thriving so excited about it and you can see the buds here where the blooms would come and friends that's why i'm doing them in the back here because they get really large okay but anyways let's go over here to the flamingo garden bed and look at my jalapeno peppers it's doing well still have more peppers in here and these are the marigold seed i just put in there and then we have more tomatoes on this end all right so here's the flamingo garden bed it's doing so well from the last week or the last two weeks i share this with you i just want to give you an update look at the cleome friends these we did from seeds together so excited about these cleomes there are annuals in my area i got it in zone b6 b7 a and i think they should be annuals but who knows i still have leftover seeds so these I'll definitely be planting again because I just love Cleomes. And then below here, these are our King Coral. As I said to you before, they should have been pink. You could see the one is pink, but at this point, I think this is orange, right? Anyways, and I want to show you something here, friends. You will not believe what I saw. I thought it was a weed. And I have a plant app. I love to use it in my garden when I see unusual seedlings coming out, friends. This is Dahlia, yes last year i planted dahlia i remember it was right here and i dug it up okay and look look at this i can't believe it i don't know how it got over here maybe i planted one here just don't remember doing that but this is dahlia coming out and i'm so excited about that anyways and here we have the liatris the sun is out and that's our double knockout rose there friends and look at the liatris here's a sneak peek of what the blooms will look like so pretty and as i said to you before i have no clue where all these liatris came from yes i planted them but i don't remember planting that much but i'm loving it i'm loving the vertical interest in here and here we have a blushing bright hydrangea you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna make a video with all the clarence plants in my garden and just call it clarence plant toe in the garden this one was ten dollars from Lowe's last year on Clarence and then here we have another King Coral Silosha it's beautiful and the Spirea is right there and friends I use my tomato cage and I just did this with the gladiolus because these definitely need staking and I think it looks neat right I love gladiolus but I don't like how they get messy and the way you have to stake them so I may pick up more of these and just tuck them like this and look who's blooming behind here snapdragons those are from last year and as I said to you before all the plants in here should be shades of flamingo color friends I just learned a couple of weeks ago flamingo comes in also yellow I did not know there's yellow flamingo it's not just pink they have the white the pink and white and they also have the yellow one so Good to know. Anyways, so here we have more Silosha in the front. And here we have this sedum I planted in for last year. And friends, here's another Cleo me. Yes, I planted them throughout. But I'm so happy they're doing very well. Alrighty, so this is what the back is looking like. Alright friends, I'm back up on the patio, but I just wanted to share with you how the backyard is looking. It's looking so good. And just remember to keep your plants hydrated. Very, very important. Keep them hydrated and cut out the spent blooms. And when you water, water them. 
at the end of the day when the sun is going down or when the sun is gone i should say don't water them in the hot sun very important and when you water water from the base of your plant all right friends until next time i'll see you in the next one and i'm gonna leave the end with my pollinator right here